Hi, good morning, Emma. Good morning. Uh, welcome to DB Sistel. Uh, we're really happy to have you here speaking here tonight at um, Women Tech Maker event. And we just wanted to ask you a couple of questions in advance. Of course, thank you for having me. So, right, your current title is like a cloud um, developer advocate uh, at Google in Seattle. And what exactly does that mean? And what exactly is your professional emphasis? Sure. So developer advocate is a role in developer relations. So our job is to build connections and relationship with Google software engineers and developers and practitioners outside of Google. So we create content like um, presentations, uh, online content like YouTube videos and blog posts, and help external developers learn technologies, not only about Google, but e everything in general. And we also uh, work with external communities like GDG, um, Google developer groups, Google developer experts, and women tech makers, and bring community feedback to Google software engineers and help them build better products. Okay, so that's brilliant. So that's like educating the developers, listening to the developers, yes. and integrating the feedback of developers into your products. Exactly. Okay, that sounds like an amazing job. Um, from your point of view, where will we see the biggest advantages of cloud technology in the future? Um, so it's getting, so we, we cannot necessarily build everything by ourselves. For example, we have a lot of new emerging new technologies like uh, big data uh, platform and machine learning, and we have much, much newer hardware uh, coming, and we are migrating from traditional general processing processors uh, to uh, more specialized processors like GPUs, and, and uh, we have uh, chips called TPUs for especially for machine learning, and in order to combine uh, the best technology for each use case you have, uh, we need to we we can't we cannot invest in everything. So we need to choose and buy what we need for our specific applications. I think I told you. Um Deutsche Bahn is one of the biggest mobility and logistics company in Europe, and we already started uh, migrating. Um, a lot of our applications to the cloud a few years ago. Uh, we actually sold one of our data centers and completely migrated that um, into the cloud. Um, obviously, it's a, like a huge operation, probably one of the biggest migrations in Europe at the moment. Um, could you give us a hint of um, what opportunities shouldn't be missed? Sure. Um, so each cloud provider has its own advantages there and a little bit of areas for improvement, of improvement. And there are certain technologies like open source products and, and products uh, like Kubernetes and Istio and, and TensorFlow and such uh, that, you, that will help you migrate from one cloud to another, for example. So and if there, if there is any need in the future, uh, in, in order to make sure your your infrastructure is future proof, uh, I would use, I would uh, take a look into some of the um, standards and and open source products that will help you migrate from uh, one cloud to another or distribute and federate multiple cl uh, clouds um, to make it more available and more uh, future proof. Okay, okay, great. What would be what would be your reply to somebody who's skeptical about the decision? Um, of a company like Deutsche Bahn, who no longer runs its own like um, data center infrastructure? Um, we have so many companies uh, running completely uh, on cloud. Of course, Google is one. Google has data centers, but everything we offer is the exact same infrastructure we use for our products. Like we serve billions of users every day, and. So if we, if we could do that with our in infrastructure, suddenly you can do, run, do and run your application on a cloud provider or on Google Cloud. There are a lot of new companies working solely on cloud. So if Google can do that, probably you can do that too. Um, in one of your tweets, I saw that you're a rail fan. Yeah. Uh, can you just tell me what does a rail fan mean for you? 
Yeah, I have traveled with uh, Deutsche Bahn a lot. I so I like to uh, travel. The first time I visited uh, Germany was in 2005. Uh, back then, uh, the Berlin Hauptbahnhof was still under construction, so I took the train from Munich to Berlin. And now you have the new line between uh, these two cities. I want to try that. I I like new technologies and new like infrastructure. So everyone's you know, working hard to improve uh, the train network and. Uh, help people move between cities and, and and meet family and friends and I love these kind of things and um, so yes. Okay that sounds brilliant that's great um, and one last question um, so what exactly is Women Tech Makers where you are this evening? Sure so Women Tech Makers is a community of uh, women uh, female engineers and allies so people want to expand their network and because women are not necessarily represented in tech. We have fewer women engineers than men engineers, for example. And women tech makers is an important opportunity to build a community, help people learn technology, and, and get, uh, help them uh, get involved in tech. And women tech makers has uh, chapters in its, 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 each city in the world. So wherever you go, you can visit them and help, um, help them grow, or you can uh, learn new technology and make new connections. And yes, that, that, that is a great opportunity to, um, uh, for women and other, others to build connections and, and yes, learn, uh, get involved in tech. Yeah, that's brilliant. Uh, more women in tech. Um, that's exactly what we're hoping to have this evening where you'll be talking. So um, that was all of my questions. Um, once again, thanks very much for popping in and saying hello. And I'd like to wish you a wonderful time here in Germany. Thank you so much. It is a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much.